for each one of you tonight. Um, while we hope you leave entertained, saying, oh, that was a great show, if that's all you leave thinking, then uh, we will have missed the point. We didn't travel here to Denver just to entertain you tonight. We traveled here in the hopes that someone who might be lost would be able to leave saying, I'm not lost anymore. Yeah. We traveled here in the, in the hopes that someone who might be weighed down by some of their past mistakes might be reminded in a powerful way that they don't have to hang on to them anymore. And you can leave them right here on the floor of this theater and walk out a new creation. We traveled here in the hopes tonight that someone whose marriage might be on the verge of divorce would say, you know, let's keep fighting. Let's keep fighting. We travel in the hopes that someone here who's battling addiction and the devil's whispering in their ear saying, oh, you're never going to get over this. I got my chains wrapped around you. We realize that those chains are ready to fall off right now. The minute you Amen. Woo! Listen, I hope that as you watch these stories, you weren't just a mere spectator. It's impossible not to be. If you're anything like me and the other artists, we watch these stories from history and we see a little bit of ourselves in them, don't we? I'll tell you, one of the things I love about what we've witnessed tonight is that we have been shown that since the beginning of creation, God has been in the business of helping messed up people. <laughs> and the Bible says that every single one of us is a sinner. We were born broken, in need of the healing touch of the Savior. And I love that one by one, we saw Jesus step into somebody's life, somebody who'd made a mistake, somebody who didn't have confidence, somebody who thought they were too far gone, and Jesus looked at him with those eyes of compassion and said, hey, I'm not done yet. I'm still writing your story. So place your story in my hands and let me change your life. I don't know about you, but that gives me great confidence tonight. That gives me great encouragement that God could use somebody who's messed up like me. You see, I want to tell you something. We travel all around the country, and sometimes I would get discouraged as a Christian singer. We're doing a nice Christian concert here, thanks to a nice Christian radio station called K-Love. For all these nice Christian people, and sometimes I would think, maybe I'm just preaching to the choir. Maybe these people have all heard this a million times. Then I started collecting your stories and reading your stories. I've read over 40,000 stories from the choir, and you know what I have learned? I've learned that the choir is messed up. <laughs> I've learned that the choir is made up of broken people who don't have all the answers. I've learned that the choir is made up of people who are desperate to believe that there's a God who's not done with them yet. See, that's why we're in the choir, isn't it? Why are we here tonight? Because we want to believe that it's not over for us, that there's still hope for us, that the best is yet to come, that our future can be better than our past. And I'm thankful that if the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a what? A new creation. The old is what? Still here? No, it's gone. And the new has come. I'm thankful for that. You might be here standing here tonight, though, and you've heard these stories, you've heard these songs, and you're still thinking to yourself, Matthew, you don't know my story. It's too messed up. God couldn't love me anymore. God couldn't still use me. If you only knew my story, it's too broken. That's why I just want to share with you the story that inspired the song we were just singing. It came from a guy who was in a crowd just like this, at a concert just like this, thinking defeated thoughts just like that. Rob was a full-blown heroin addict who had just gotten out of jail two days before. But his mom never quit praying for him. And when he got out of jail, his mom begged him, Rob, would you come to this concert with me? And he reluctantly agreed to go to the concert. Rob, by his own admission, was knocking on death's door. But he sat in that concert and he heard a song called Hello, My Name Is. And during that song, he felt like God was speaking straight to him, saying, Rob, I know everything you've done. I know every dark place you've been. But I'm still running after you, Rob, and you're still my child. It's time to come home. Rob said yes to Jesus that night, and grace began to win in his life. He went home and wrote his story to me, and he said, I I'm a new man. I want to be a new man anyways. Can you help me? Well, my dad's a preacher, and he and I reached out to Rob, and we got him into a place called Teen Challenge, a Christian recovery program. Today, Rob is 19 months clean and sober. He got a job at the recovery center, and he's going to be the grace wins. I want you to know that that's God's plan for your life. No matter what kind of brokenness you have in your life, God's not done with you yet. When I was 13 years old, I heard Reverend Billy Graham on television. 
and he was given an invitation, inviting people to ask Jesus into their heart. And he asked a question to me through the television that I feel is a fitting question to leave you with after what we've witnessed tonight. He said, what will you do with Jesus? Will you say yes to Jesus like Rob did, like I did, and accept his gift of forgiveness and grace? Realize that there's nothing you can do to earn your way to it. You just open your heart and your hands and say yes. Or will you, will you reject him? Will you choose to be the author of your own story and go your own way? How you answer that question will decide where you spend eternity. God offers us an eternity in heaven where we hear him say, well done. And I don't know about you, but that's where I want to spend my eternity. I want to know beyond the shadow of a doubt. And so we're going to pray together. And I'm going to give you an opportunity right here and now to have a moment of truth, a defining moment before you leave. And as I pray, if you feel like God's knocking on the door of your heart, it's time for you to come home. It's time for you to say yes. It's time for you to lay some old baggage on the ground. I'm just going to invite you simply to pray this prayer out loud.